Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Talk Universe. Back in 1936, a 24-year-old British mathematician named Alan Turing received divine inspiration. He came up with a fantastic machine that could generate thoughts and calculate any imaginable computable function. He turned this idea into a paper called On Computable Numbers with an application to the Entscheidungs problem. And this was the very first concept of artificial intelligence. People named the machine Turing designed the Turing machine, and the standard to test such a machine was the Turing test. If a machine passes the Turing test, it means it's an AI that can think autonomously, learn on its own, and evolve. Nowadays, we call this type of AI general artificial intelligence. One could say that everything was predetermined in Turing's 1936 paper. An unknown creator created humans, and humans will eventually create artificial intelligence. When people think of AI, most picture humanoid robots that look just like us, possess intelligence, and work tirelessly. They'll do exactly as they're told. If you ask them to go east, they'll never go west. That's AI's ultimate goal. But current technology is still far from reaching it. Why haven't we gotten there yet? Our limitations don't just apply to machines but to us as well. Scientists believe that to create an AI just like humans, we need to overcome three levels. The first level is called algorithmic intelligence. Examples include IBM's super question answering AI Watson, Google's AlphaGo, which defeated the World Go champion Kiiji, the ImageNet visual database led by Fei-Fei Li, and the popular chat GPT we're using right now. These all fall under the category of algorithmic intelligence. The second level is linguistic intelligence, where AI can engage in conversations with humans without any issues, understand metaphors and language, and possess common sense about the world. This would be like the computer in Star Trek, able to answer any question posed by humans. Some might say, isn't ChatGPT already a conversational AI? There is a fundamental difference. ChatGPT doesn't quite understand what we're saying, but we can discuss that later. The third level is imagination intelligence, where AI can imagine, like Lieutenant Commander Data in Star Trek. His way of thinking is similar to humans, however, there's a bit of inconsistency in the show. Data is the ship's computer and is constantly connected to it, yet he always has to ask the computer questions, essentially asking himself. It's a bit peculiar, but since it's an early sci-fi show, we won't delve too deeply into that. There's a strict progression between the three levels of AI. Algorithmic intelligence cannot surpass linguistic intelligence, which in turn cannot surpass imagination intelligence. So, what is AI's ultimate goal? Einstein once provided a definition. He said that the true mark of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. According to Einstein's perspective, only intelligence with the power of imagination can be considered the ultimate artificial intelligence. Imagination is the ability to form images, perceptions, and concepts. What does having imagination imply? It implies the possession of consciousness. After a long detour, we finally arrive at the crucial point. The so-called general artificial intelligence aims to endow AI with consciousness. So, the next question arises, what is consciousness? Let's start with two examples from the natural world. A single ant doesn't possess much intelligence, but when a group of ants comes together, they can exhibit mysterious collective wisdom. When a flood comes, the ant colony forms a sort of Noah's Ark with their bodies, carrying food and unhatched eggs as they flee together. After the rain subsides, the colony searches for a suitable location to build a new home. Ants don't have leaders, and they can't speak. So how do they know how to work together to achieve such complex goals? Scientists have discovered that the natural world is full of such phenomena, where complex systems can give rise to something akin to intelligence. The flight of large flocks of starlings follows the same principle. Thousands of starlings form a flock, flying at a speed of about 20. 30 meters per second, with just a few meters of distance between each bird. How do they coordinate, and why don't they collide? Scientists have found that the flight mechanism of starlings is quite simple. They only need to follow three rules. Fly at the same speed. Stay close to each other. Avoid collisions. 
By setting these three rules in a computer program, it can simulate the flight of a starling flock. This shows that without any interference, structure and complexity can emerge naturally. This characteristic is known as a self-organizing system or emergence. Nature is truly amazing. Both the ant colony and the flock of starlings seem to have developed a form of consciousness. Perhaps having a large and complex enough system is a prerequisite for the emergence of consciousness. What kind of system is both large and complex enough? Needless to say, it's the computer. Let's go back to 1956 when 29-year-old mathematician John McCarthy held a small seminar at Dartmouth College. Only 10 people participated, but all of them went on to become important scholars in the field of artificial intelligence without exception. This group included AI pioneer Marvin Minsky and the father of information theory, Claude Shannon. These 10 scientists spent two months drafting a proposal listing the key challenges that needed to be addressed in the field of artificial intelligence, such as natural language processing, neural networks, abstract concepts and reasoning, machine learning and self-creation, among others. These themes continue to define the field of artificial intelligence even today. A few years later, McCarthy founded the Stanford Artificial Intelligence Project at Stanford University. He was very optimistic and set a goal to create a fully intelligent machine within a decade. In other words, he hoped to develop general artificial intelligence by the 1970s. The approach he used is called symbolism. Symbolism, simply put, involves implementing all knowledge and reasoning through programming to simulate human cognition. However, people soon realized that no matter how powerful the computer or how sophisticated the program is, general artificial intelligence won't happen. It's been 70 years since McCarthy defined artificial intelligence, and general artificial intelligence has still not emerged. However, symbolism has indeed been successful in the realm of narrow artificial intelligence. The most representative of these is known as expert systems. As we mentioned earlier, IBM's artificial intelligence system, Watson, is one of the most famous expert systems. In 2011, Watson participated in a quiz show called Jeopardy and defeated two human contestants to become the champion. How did Watson do it? First of all, Watson has incredibly powerful computing capabilities, allowing it to process 500 GB of data per second. Secondly, it has access to a vast amount of data. Computer experts process billions of pages of data from the Internet into structured knowledge including all of Wikipedia's data for Watson to use. To enable quick retrieval, Watson didn't use a hard drive. Its 4 TB of data was stored entirely in memory, which is still considered an incredibly powerful hardware setup today. However, Watson didn't completely outperform humans. They had a narrow victory. It was behind in some instances because it didn't truly understand the meaning of the questions it still lacked the universal human understanding of the world or common sense. So how did Watson win the championship? Experts analyzed the main reason. Watson's button-pressing speed was faster than humans. It used electrical signals to press buttons while humans used their hands. Many times, humans thought of the correct answers too, but they were at a disadvantage due to slower button-pressing speeds. It seems that McCarthy indeed misjudged the development of artificial intelligence. Why can't humans create a machine with consciousness? At this stage, people began to rethink McCarthy's approach. Fast forward to November 2022, the AI company OpenAI launched their chatbot, ChatGPT. This product immediately became popular worldwide. In just five days, one million people registered, and within two months, it reached 100 million users. ChatGPT is not like previous chat applications. It answers questions clearly and deeply. More importantly, it can continuously answer questions while maintaining context in the conversation. This gives a preliminary feeling of chatting with another person. Why is it only preliminary? ChatGPT is still not perfect and has a considerable distance from true human interaction. Therefore, ChatGPT is not truly general artificial intelligence. Like Watson, ChatGPT does not truly understand the meaning of the questions. So how does ChatGPT achieve this near-human-like conversation experience? 
This brings us to the second major school of thought in AI, connectionism. As we mentioned earlier, symbolism is the first major school of thought in AI. Its essence is the belief that consciousness originates from human cognition. Connectionism is different. It posits that consciousness originates from the human brain. Connectionism has its roots in bionics, particularly in the study of the human brain. We know that the human brain has approximately 100 billion neurons, and each neuron is connected to thousands of other neurons through synapses. This forms a large and complex system. However, we don't know how neuronal signals generate consciousness. Scientists imagine the emergence of consciousness as a black box. Signals are input into the black box and consciousness is generated. Consciousness then guides our subsequent actions, which can be further broken down into language, movement, logical reasoning, and so on. Scientists have been studying the black box in the brain by analyzing input signals and output signals, or human actions. Computer scientists wondered if they could apply the concept of the brain's black box to artificial intelligence. Mathematicians proposed a method using Fourier transforms in mathematics to create a black box. By analyzing input and output functions, they could deduce the characteristics of the black box. This process is called convolution. The neural networks and deep learning algorithms we talk about today are, from a mathematical perspective, processes that use Fourier transforms to solve object feature equations. In other words, they create a black box to simulate the operation of the brain. At this point, it's important to emphasize the black box concept. One frightening fact is that scientists are not entirely sure how the black box works. Let's take an example. There are now many large-scale visual databases that can recognize objects within any image. Numerical annotations on the edges of the objects represent confidence levels. For instance, the confidence level of the dog in the center might be 0.994, indicating that the machine believes there is a 99.4% probability that the object is a dog. However, what exactly is the machine basing its judgment on? Is it the dog's nose, mouth, protruding tongue, or round body? We don't know which of these features are considered significant by the machine. Any artificial intelligence involving neural networks faces the black box problem. If we can't solve the black box issue, we won't be able to fully understand artificial intelligence. If we don't understand something, we may not know whether or not we can trust it. This is a particularly challenging issue in current artificial intelligence research. I asked online why ChatGPT is so powerful, and ChatGPT responded, I am trained based on a neural network structure called Transformer. The transformer structure combines the ideas of both symbolic and connectionist approaches. So, ChatGPT is a hybrid product of the two ideologies. In addition to symbolic and connectionist approaches, there is a third major school of thought in artificial intelligence called behaviorism. The main focus of this approach is to simulate human behavior. The representative product of this school is Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics robots complete tasks by responding to stimuli in the environment and then learning and improving based on feedback signals. However, Boston Dynamics robots are not purely behaviorist. They also employ symbolic and connectionist approaches, using advanced algorithms and control strategies to continually deepen their learning. Thus, today, the boundaries between the three major AI schools of thought have become quite blurred. ChatGPT is a super neural network containing 175 billion parameters. The model is trained using 45 terabytes of data, nearly 1 trillion words. It predicts which words are more likely to follow others by analyzing massive amounts of text. Therefore, ChatGPT still falls under the category of algorithmic intelligence. I asked ChatGPT if it passed the Turing test, and it responded, as a language model, I cannot take the Turing test as it requires interaction with humans to evaluate whether a machine can exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. However, I was designed to engage in conversation and answer questions in natural language. In other words, although ChatGPT is a culmination of current AI technology, it has not passed the Turing test and does not belong to the realm of general artificial intelligence. 
Now we return to the question we started with. Why is the key to artificial intelligence about humans rather than machines? This is mainly because, to this day, humans are still unclear about the nature of consciousness. The three major AI schools of thought, symbolic trying to simulate the human mind, connectionist attempting to simulate the human brain, and behaviorist aiming to simulate human behavior, all grapple with the question of whether consciousness truly arises from the mind, brain, and behavior. There is no definitive answer to this question. The scientific community is divided into two camps. One camp believes that general artificial intelligence will never be achieved because the origin of consciousness remains a mystery. The other camp argues that humans are merely soulful machines, and if humans can possess intelligence, why can't machines? Consciousness might be an emergent property, much like ant or bird colonies. The complexity of modern computers has already far surpassed the human brain. Perhaps one day machines will awaken, and that day will mark the rise of true general artificial intelligence. Finally, the question remains, would the consciousness that emerges from a black box be something humans can accept? That's it for this episode. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.